this thing. The raging redhead Cam Stewart is going to be a game time uh, decision uh, today. There's a um, massive, massive communications that break down, internet uh, shortage, cell phone communication uh, shortage, um, debit card uh, machines have been uh, shut down, but we we stand strong. We stand strong right now. So the raging redhead Cam Stewart, listen, he's on standby. We're hoping, we're hoping at some point um, he'll be able to join us. Like basically he's just waiting uh, for the power to come back on right now. I've warned people about this. All you got to do is watch the Terminator, Skynet. It's as simple as that. You put all your power into them. And one thing I love about this too is we're pretty much, we're not, we're not quite yet into a cashless society yet, but if you go to a lot of sporting events, they don't take cash at games a lot of the times now. They started this in a pandemic and it continued on through. They don't take cash. It slows things down with the change and everything as well. Uh, but what happens when uh, what happens when the machines uh, break down? Then there's a lot of cash lost. All right, so we're going to try to make some money here uh, this evening on the program. we got a lot of stuff. Uh, Steve Merrill's going to step up and in and kick it uh, with us. Steve's going to be stepping up. And, in fact, Steve's ready to go. Steve's not playing around. He's uh, He's ready to go. Cam Stewart's out. Merrill's in. Sherapan's back uh, from from Pittsburgh, uh, back into Vegas. Uh, we got Dubsy joining us later. We're going to talk Wimbledon. Uh, we've got uh, NASCAR, F1, Major League Baseball, CFL. A lot of stuff going on. NHL draft uh, last night, the craziness. Uh, people are still uh, saying, wow, uh, what happened? And I love the fact that everybody knows what was going to happen after uh, the fact. Like, people say, oh, no, no, this guy knew that uh, this guy was going to go third and fourth. There's a difference between, like, knowing 30 seconds and a minute before and telling everybody a week before. Let's bring in Steve Merrill right now. You know, Steve, that's the problem. People already uh, people always tell us what happened. Tell me what's going to happen, not what already happened, right? What's up, Steve? Yeah, and it, whether it's the financial markets, Gabe, or the betting markets, um, if people know what's going to happen, it's priced, and it was not priced last night. In fact, Teddy Covers, we opened Wager Talk today today with that segment. Third straight draft this spring. Baseball, football, I'm sorry, basketball, football, and hockey now in which the favorite did not go number one, correct? So obviously nobody knew or they would have been betting money on it. Yeah, it's been, and you know, this is this is the new world that we're in right now, Steve. And I've talked about this. The 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 there's so many more betters than there used to be. It's just it's sort of like those contests before, and there used to be 400 people in them. Now there's 4,000. It changes the 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 dynamics of it, and there's just so many people, so many people betting this stuff uh, right now. The numbers and the markets are just crazy. Is I gotta be honest, Steve. It's just been the last two drafts. The NFL draft was kind of boring. You know what I mean? It wasn't, you know what I mean? It wasn't a lot of flash uh, to it, really. And there wasn't really too many, oh, my gods, really. You know what I mean? It, it pretty much played the form. But the NBA draft, Steve, they pulled the carpet out of it, everybody. Right at the last second, Bancaro was as high as 23-1 to 1, uh, to be the top pick. Right. NFL draft, Steve, there were four different guys, Steve, that were a one-time, like, Pretty big minus money to be favorites in the end of, in, in the NFL draft, even. Like I know on, on draft day it sort of got normal, but you're right. This this new draft market, the modern modern draft market, is whack, Steve. When it's the exact opposite of what you would have thought. You would think with more sports books, more odds out there, the information is faster and more available than it's ever been in history. It wouldn't happen. It's more random than ever. <laughs> Shout out to our uh, radio affiliates. I am Gabriel Morenzi. We're kicking it. The Raging Redhead, uh, Cam Stewart, for all of our AM radio affiliates uh, right now. He didn't take the day off again. We're not calling him out like we called out uh, Coach James Young for being soft. Street clothes, uh, street clothes coach. Uh, poor coach might be tuning in. We hope you're feeling better, uh, Coach. The flowers, the, the gift basket we sent it should get there shortly yeah. uh, for you. <laughs> but uh, the Raging Redhead, Cam Stewart, um, there's a massive, like, internet. Uh, Cam, like... I saw you figured like internet outage. All right, for what an hour, half an hour? This thing's been going on all day right now. I just went into a Seven Eleven, and uh, it was cash only in the uh, in the Seven Eleven. So we're gonna try to make you some cash uh, tonight. We got baseball coming up, and we're gonna talk about one of the hottest teams uh, in the league. We got Steve Merrill in the house. WagerTalk.com uh, with us, Steve. Kind of in one of your backyards here, sort of in the area, the Baltimore Orioles, the Baltimore Orioles. Yeah. Like, this is like it's past sort of, oh, yeah, they're a good team to bet on. 
we know about the number one team in the league on the run line, Steve, but they're actually winning games now for real. 13-7, and seven, Steve, in their last 20 games, the Baltimore Orioles. Yeah, and it's not just the run line, by the way. They're number two in the league in money line, profit one. The yeah. only team ahead of them, the New York Yankees, who's on our pace to win 117 games right now. Um, the AL East is just fascinating to me. We've got the Blue Jays who are a game up. Now they're tied for the last wild card spot. Now the Rays are a game above for the last wild card. The Red Sox half a game up. I mean, we're looking at probably four playoff teams from the AL East, and the Orioles are 40 and 44. I feel so bad for my former Baltimore Orioles. That was, of course, my team growing up, Gabe, as you know, in the D.C., Northern Virginia area. We did not have the Nationals back then, and I was a Cal Ripken, Eddie Murray guy. Uh, I'd love yeah, to see Eddie Murray. Well. It's just Eddie Murray, switch hitter, great hitter. Not, not, not a fan of the media. Eddie did not like the media, to say the least. But <laughs> no, <I'm> <laughs> you know, I did Expos games – I knew Frank, well, I stories, I knew Frank Robinson uh, pretty well, and Frank was a great icebreaker and stuff because, you know, Frank was a really, really sort of hard-nosed right. guy as well. Like, you know, I had, you know, Frank would tell me, no, 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 he's cool. And he'd be like, well, come over here. And he'd introduce me to someone. I went up to Frank. I said, listen, Frank, Eddie Murray was one of my favorite players of all time. You think he could break the ice? He goes, oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers and The morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley comes over there. Give me the game pass. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live all like access. Vandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, yeah, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The morning after. The Panthers host week number one in Charlotte. Mm -hmm. Yes, that familiar yep. foe, the Cleveland Browns. And the Browns only a slight one point favorite as of right now. That total relatively low, 42 and a half. It's funny how things work out, huh? Baker Mayfield is new home in Carolina, and then he gets to play Cleveland that opening week of the NFL. The biggest question with me with Baker Mayfield is going to be that right. locker room. The Sports Grid Network. The Pat McAfee Show. All these little aliens land, and every ex-football player says, they got no jaw. Put <laughs> <All right. laughs> a helmet on and just start spearing people. It would feel good to make a few tackles. Oh, back in the day, tackles too. You got Ed Reed flying. <laughs> yeah. Troy Paul Ma, I got a room. AJ just leading with the head, everybody. I mean, the future looks bright for us humans. Hey, let's go, yeah. humans. Come on. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Professor Rick Haro with your daily numbers game. Wimbledon, exciting as always. Americans acquitting very well, but that's not the issue. Business somewhat back to normal. The first day, the crowds were down about 7%, still 42,000. And a lot were talking about the limitations, some COVID, but the event canceled two years ago, limited seating last year. Certainly from a business perspective, nobody's worried. But the bottom line this year and the addition economically is the middle Sunday committed. They know they're going to have events. The roofs also add to the fact that there will be no rain out days for television. That allows the extra day not as a makeup day, but as a new revenue day. And it's generating significant dollars. Once we see the revenues at the end of Wimbledon, it'll be up significantly over the next year. Glad I'm going to Europe to see the end of it this week, folks. I'll keep you posted.
Game Time Decisions continues. I am Gabe Morenci, our boy, the Raging Redhead, Cam Stewart's lost um, lost in space. He's stuck in the Matrix uh, somewhere. Cam is online, actually. It's funny. Steve Merrill with us right now. It's funny because Cam's not on Twitter very much, Steve. He goes, you know what I mean? He checks in like once a day or something, and he, he might say something. He tweets on Sundays about golf. Uh, but I found it strange this morning because I'm on the West Coast. He's on the East Coast. I found it strange this morning. I woke up and I see Cam like tweeting away about sports. Like he's like talking to people. He's engaged. Oh, yeah, yeah, and this and that. And he's like, oh, they're, they're, he's going back and forth. I'm thinking this is very unlike him. Very unlike him. <laughs> then I found out that he's got no, he's on his phone. Like he's got no nothing. Like his internet doesn't work. He can't get anything. So he's on his phone. I guess he's feeling like detached from the world or something. I'd be saying, I, I told him, I said, just jump in the damn chat or something, Cam. We'll just talk to you through the chat on the show. Because <laughs> if you can, you, you know, so he's on his phone, but he doesn't have enough juice, obviously, to do a te- television and radio show. Uh, massive, massive internet uh, problem. So we got Steve Merrill in the house. A lot of stuff to get to uh, here with Steve. Big race weekend. What's Atlanta this weekend, huh, Steve? Atlanta and then uh, Austria. Yep. In the F1, and I want to throw this at you after. We'll just stick to the baseball now, but it's pretty cool, Steve. I don't know. Like, F1 fans don't like. Some people like it, and some people don't. And it's just sort of what you and I have been talking about with NASCAR, you know, trying different things. The football, hey, let's go to Los Angeles, right? And in and, and the stadium, et cetera. And, like, they're trying, you know, and I think they need to continue to do this and reach out and do different type of things like this. But F1 is really seeming like shaking things up. They started it last year. And people didn't fully like it, but they brought it back this year. But they only do it for three races, Steve. They have a sprint race, buddy. A sprint race. So it's not the race, though, itself. So it's very strange. Like, they have their, their pole position. So they have their like, – normally, Steve, on Friday, it's practice. So, you, you, know, you, get, you, you, gotta, you know, you get your practice rounds in. Saturday, qualification. Sunday, race. Today, it was, it was qualification. It was like, boom. It was like practice qualification. It was practice, and then right after the practice, boom, in the qualification. And then tomorrow they have a sprint race. 24 laps around the track, Steve. Winner gets eight points added to the championship standings. But some of the drivers like it, so it's sort of nascar in a way. So you got 24, yeah. you got, you know, 24 laps, bro. Like, no strategy, Steve. They don't worry about the pits. You're not worried about anything. It's just driver versus driver, 24 laps around the track. Pretty cool. And, of course, you can bet on it. Sort of like the spread. I guess it yeah. would be like the duels almost, Steve, right? Like the NASCAR duels. Yeah, that's what it kind of sounds like. It's like a yeah. qualifying on steroids almost. I mean, it's like a souped-up <laughs> gimmick thing. But but I'm on board with that. It's more stuff to put odds on, more stuff to bet You're on. You're giving and fans way, something to it. watch, and it's different than just going around right. the track, right? Yeah, and look, my knock on Formula One, as you know, Gabe, has been that the guys up front end up staying up front. There's not a lot of passing. It's road courses. They're narrow. So I think anything they can do to spice it up gets me on board. Um, Perez had his qualifying third time to lead it, apparently. So he's going to start 10th now instead of 4th. So that's something to keep an eye on, just some news I saw this afternoon. Um, Getting back to Atlanta, by the way, keep in mind Atlanta is now basically a restrictor plate track. It is unlike Atlanta from last year and the years before. It was the fastest intermediate. It's basically now almost like Talladega and Daytona. We had a March race. Wow! You're looking at Atlanta, folks, do not. Yeah, it's always it's always been a speedway before March, that's... right? You can't look at anything except the March race, and it's pretty random because of that. What about Chase you know, Elliott? Faster than ever. Chase Elliott to be good. William Byron, his teammate William Byron, was actually very good in March. Won the race, led a third of all the laps. Um, but there again, you know, these restrictor plate tracks are so random. This isn't quite as random as Talladega and Daytona, but it's pretty close. And uh, it's interesting because Dave uh, Ryan Blaney, Dave Blaney's son, Ryan Blaney and Martin Truex Jr. are the top two Atlanta drivers the last five races since 2019. Once again, that data doesn't really translate now. They're both winless. They're barely on that playoff cup with 13 other winners so far, taking up 13 of the 16 automatic spots. Well, let me, you know, I've been more in an F1 than NASCAR this year, but Steve, you and I have been talking NASCAR a long time. What about Ricky Stenhouse at 30 to 1? Brad Keselowski at uh, 35 to 1. Like, if it's more random, we're getting guys that are good in this right. format at that price. This is Ricky's Yeah, yeah Stenhouse, right? obviously. Yeah, those are two guys, yeah. like you said, that have been really good, especially at Talladega. And Stenhouse has not been good on other tracks. So he's a guy you definitely look at. Kozlowski has been good everywhere until recently. Now he has his new team, and he's been awful this year. He did not lead a single lap at Atlanta in March. 
uh, but he has been good on plate tracks in the past. But that, of course, with, with Penske Racing, Blaney, as I mentioned, has been very good. I think Blaney's a guy to keep an eye on. He's been good on restrictor plates, and he's been good on the previous Atlanta. Truex Jr. was good at Atlanta, but he's been terrible on plate tracks. So I'm going to scratch Truex. I think Blaney could be our 14th different winner at Atlanta this week for the season, that is. Wow. Wow. Um, that's cool, though. Uh, you know what I mean? It's un- unpredictability. Like, it. like we said, yeah, Motorsport. Like great job by FanDuel, too. I love their Motorsport page. It's all on one page, Steve. It's perfect. Yeah, it's clean. Motor, mo- motor, it's clean. Yeah, Motorsport, F1, NASCAR you pick props, your circuit. F1 props. It's, it's all right circuit. there. I like yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not like... It's not like, oh, I got to go to another page for all Indy or whatever. You know what I mean? It's like, no, no. Here's our motorsport page. Which circuit do you want, right? Uh, Love it. All right, so let's get back to the baseball right now because we've got games coming up in about 20 minutes' time. Uh, Tampa and Cincinnati, uh, Steve. I got to tell you, man, McClanahan's been unbelievable uh, when you look at, you know, the numbers that this guy has put up. He leads the American League in ERA, opponents batting average, only hitting a buck 79 opponents on McClanahan this year. is whip, Steve. Uh, is a 0.81 tied for the American League in strikeouts with 133. Ten straight starts of at least six innings, seven plus strikeouts or fewer, uh, and three earned runs allowed. It's the longest streak in the American in uh, in American League history, and the third longest in the majors since 1901. He's been that good. And Luis Castillo, showcase Price is Right, showcase special. Steve, he's going to get traded, and he's pitching well right now. His last two starts, he's been dominant. I like the under seven and a half. I wish it was a little higher, but I'm going to take the under, Steve. Yeah, and I think if you're going to play the under, you might want to consider the first five because the problem with the Reds, there's been a lot of problem with the Reds, but they're the worst. <laughs> I got a lot of problems baseball. with the Reds. A lot of problems yeah, with you people. Got a lot of problems <laughs> with you Reds. But you know what's interesting about Cincinnati, though? Their offensive numbers at home, game. if you look at home games only, they're like top five, top ten in a lot of statistical categories. It's been a hitter-friendly park this year because Cincinnati on the road is one of the two or three worst offensive teams in baseball. So they're not a good offensive team, but – for some reason, Cincinnati's home games, 25 and 18 to the over. But the bullpen's really bad. They had the worst ERA and the worst whip. So it doesn't matter what stat you want to look at. They're dead last. Um, so first five gets that shaky bullpen out of the way, gets two really strong starters, as you mentioned. So I think the first five under makes sense. I'm going to take a look at some of these uh, strikeout props uh, for tonight as well. Uh, we did well with the strikeout props uh, the other night. Uh, we just talked about McClanahan having 133 strikeouts on the season and Castillo's pitching well right now and he wants to pitch well because the better that he pitches sure. the more that he's in demand and the, you know oh, what I mean like if, exactly like if you're Castillo you want to look really good so you're like man yeah I want to, I want to make the Yankees trade for me you know what I mean I want the Dodgers I want these contenders like to be interested in me and the better I pitch the more they're going to be interested so uh some, somebody keep your eye on here for the record, McClanahan, seven and a half KOs tonight. Luis Castillo, five and a half uh, strikeouts uh, is the prop. So, uh, Steve, the Baltimore Orioles, um, a- as you discussed. So, only the Yankees. You know what's amazing about the Yankees? That they are the most profitable team, considering they're favored all the time like that. Because if you look at the Dodgers right. on the uh, on the money line, Steve, it's it's a complete opposite. So, it's very impressive what the Yankees have done um, financially this year for their backers. Uh, but, guys, we've talked about the Baltimore Orioles and th- these guys being not just run line warriors. They are the number one team in baseball on the run line, but they're actually winning games. And if if we would have told people that on July 8th or whatever the hell it is now, that the Baltimore Orioles would only be four games back of the Toronto Blue Jays would be, oh, well, no, that's not happening, right? Like, <laughs> they, these guys, like, they're only four games under 500 Baltimore right now. If you bet $100 on the, on the money line of every Oriole game, you're up $1,224. Uh, but they've absolutely just murdered it. Murdered it on the, uh, on the run line uh, this year. What is it, 62%? 63.1%. Yeah, that's, that's 53 and too, 31. Yep. 53 and 31, guys. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. 
your hosts, Dave Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best slips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the Pro Football Doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. Pro Football Doc has found its new home right here with Sports Injury Central. And with that comes our expansion into other sports. Sports Injury Central will give you nonstop exclusive injury analysis from experienced team doctors from all three major sports. Doctors with resumes that include teams like the Chicago Bulls, the Texas Rangers, and the LA Chargers. So gain a fantasy DFS and betting edge right now for free at SICscore.com. The Pat McAfee Show. Here we are, Wednesday, July 6th, 2022. Baker Mayfield is going to... <gasps> the Carolina Panthers. Wow. Oh. Congrats to the Carolina Panthers, who for another season are taking a shot on who is going to be our franchise quarterback. And we will run the carousel until we find our guy. Maybe it's Baker. Shout out to the Queen City. The Sports Grid Network. The morning after. You see that 9-1 to ticket on Roy McIlroy. Do you agree that Rory should be such a short favorite for next week's Open. No, I, I don't, Benny. I mean, he hasn't won a major since 2014. He's playing at a really high level, but so too are a lot of other guys. Matty Fitzpatrick, Scotty Scheffler, Will Zalatoris. So I can't agree that Roy McIlroy is at 9-1. to one. Look, he's playing and motivated, but at 9-1, to one, I don't think it's a great number. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. Oh my gosh, like if this is their end game for 14 games next season... There's no winning, is there? There's no winning for the Cleveland Browns this season. I just, there, there's no way that they make the playoffs. There's no way that they win 10 games. I, I think there is a chance that they are the worst team in this division, depending on the quarterback play that the Pittsburgh Steelers get. You know, if, if... The Sports Grid Network. Game time decisions continues. I am Gabriel Morenci to raise your redhead. Uh, Cam Stewart's lost in space uh, right now. Remember Pigs in Space on, on the Muppets. I was a fan of that. Pigs in space. That was good stuff. Uh, it was crazy too, Steve. Cam, uh, I always bust uh, Cam's balls for not getting out enough. Now he's calling my bluff. He went like tubing the other day. He's going to see Roger Waters in concert now uh, tomorrow. But get this. <laughs> So Roger Waters is playing tonight in Toronto, Steve, except the internet doesn't work. And people, they don't, you don't have real tickets anymore. So Didn't think of that. they wow. just, they, yeah. they, they, they tweeted out, um, you have to print out your tickets of the barcode onto a piece of paper. How are people going to print out the tickets? Number one, who has a printer at home? Number two, the internet doesn't work. So how do you go to your email to print the damn email that they sent you, right? Like I could go on. I, I'm just, I'm just picturing. So Cam's going to the concert tomorrow. He's, he's, he's happy. It's not tonight. He's hoping that uh, things are worked out. And somebody told me too, they don't take cash inside the arena. So there's going to be no concessions and no drinks and no nothing. Like if I'm a band, I'm not even playing. If I can't sell merchandise, it's not worth it. Seriously, like if you're banned, that's where you make your money from the merchandise. So it's like it's almost pointless. Like <laughs> it's a good thing it's not a rap or a heavy metal show. I'll just put it that way. Like if this is like a Snoop Dogg show or something, and people were showing up and they weren't allowed in, and the phone didn't work and stuff, it would get ugly. Like if it was a Slayer concert, it would get ugly. But Roger Water fans are uh, pretty. You know, they're all baked anyway, Steve. <laughs> like they're all yeah, old and baked. The most, yeah, the most million, the most mellow rebellion. 
in the history of yeah, rock yeah. and roll. Oh man, exactly. Oh man, <laughs> that's a, that'll be about half the of them won't even remember there was a show, so it'll work out fine. <laughs> I don't think it's quite as bad as it used to be. All right, I got to do a little. Uh, hate to hate doing this, Steve. I got to do a little banking here. I said I've got to load some money into an account right now. Um, well, hopefully, you can do that. I, you're on the West Coast. Are you guys having the power outages there too? You said the 7-Eleven was virtual. I mean, was that part of the no, Rogers I'm network? I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not on that network. My phone doesn't work, but I'm good. Um, well, but you know what sucks, Steve? I haven't had the best week. And I haven't lost a lot of games, but you know, the CFL. I was killing the CFL. I raised the units pretty big, and whatever. I stumbled. Right. Put it this way, Steve. I had under 44 and a half on Monday night. Finished 23-22. Last night I had under 52. It was 45 to three or something with like two minutes left. And the team that was up 45-3 decided to score again. Not accidentally. Like they tried and celebrated, like spiked the ball and showboated and stuff after. And won 52-6 or whatever the hell it was. Like I've literally lost. Oh yeah, last night I lost a summer league bet. Well, yeah, everyone was watching a summer league at two in the morning last night. Uh, Jaden Ivey's debut, the Pistons, Steve, the Pistons and the Blazers. <laughs> Point spread is four and a half. Pistons are up five. There's like 18 seconds left. And Jaden Ivey in his first game gets teed up for throwing the ball in the air. Like he did it, like not mad, but sort of like, like playground style. Like, oh man, and he threw it up. But it went really high. And they teed him up and Buddy hit the free throw and they didn't cover him. Jaden Ivey's first game in the NBA screws. Well, Gabe, what he about screws the screws uh, us over? I'm like, oh. God. Well, the spotlight game, the uh, the Rockets Magic, one versus three, Benchero against a Smith, and the um, total had opened as low as 165 at some books, closed 170 and a half, and it lands 168. What was it 91 77? So it landed dead. How do they do this the for the summer league? league? How do they do this it's, for it's the, the summer first league? Night Steve. Of it too. <laughs> no, and Steve, these players never even play together. Like literally, Bancaro, like they these they've never played together before, Steve. Yet somehow they nail the number like this. Yeah, it's impressive. Well, there's also a six point move from the opener to the close in many books. So obviously that gives you a little wiggle room for a middle, but it's still late dish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Middle. Yeah, no, there's been a lot. Well, like I said, it was four and a half last night, and Steve, the last twenty seconds of the game was the free throw game. Oh, they're gonna cover? No, they're covering? No, they're not gonna cover it. Um, hey, they they're making rings. Actually, we're gonna get a picture up, Steve. What do you think about that? So now they, they're the they're final actually, four they were, make the playoffs or something. They have like a final four, right? Out of the 30 teams or something. Um, well, it's a championship, whatever. They, they've always had a championship. Yeah, I think four teams make the, the playoffs or whatever. Oh, but you're doing. saying the now, now they're play, doing like, a new yeah, – yeah, They yeah. play additional games, the other 28 or whatever, yeah, yeah. 26, but like one extra game or something. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, they actually play consolation games. You're right. Like they have final right, standings right. and stuff, but um, whatever. But you know, it's cool, though. They have nice rings, championship rings, summer league title rings, a little more incentive, right? You know what I mean? It's just it just added a little, little bit more. The Pistons, Steve, it was crazy. The Pistons have, like, three NBA starters playing, and they could yeah. barely beat the kids of Portland. Like, Portland had a bunch of G League kids that were scoring at will. And uh, the NBA guys on the Pistons were having a hard time with it, uh, to be honest. So, for everyone thinking the Pistons are a lock at plus 750, as Lee Cor Lee Corso would say, not so fast, uh, my friend. So you're saying first five innings here, Steve, with the under in Tampa and Cincinnati. I'm going to I'm gonna roll the dice. Uh, what do you think about the side here, Tampa or Cincinnati? Is it a little high for you, Tampa minus 176? Yeah, but I mean, I'm not. I'm in no hurry to back Cincinnati. And once again, if you're going to play the Reds, I would take a flyer on the first five because you've got a good pitcher on the mound. The Reds' bullpen is the worst in baseball, both ERA and WHIP. Um, that's another reason the full game over would make me a little nervous. And you listed those strikeout props. The two starters combined, 13 total strikeouts. So that's making me like the first five under. And it also gives the underdog a chance, I think, if it's a low-scoring first five. All right, what about the Angels uh, and the O's here? We got to ride. You, you, know, I, you and I are oh, always yeah, talking about it. Speeding Falling bullets. Live, speeding bullets. Come on, dude. They, they won five in a row for the first time in two years. On the verge of a six-game win streak, 13-7 and seven in the last 20. They're feeling good about themselves, Steve. And I only yeah, want to bet on the game. Angels when Otani pitches. Right. I was going to say that's the only time you've been wanting to bet on the Angels, and it's yeah. the only time it's been working. And you talked about speeding bullets, but the Angels are also a falling knife. Pitcher changed tonight. They got Detmers on the mound, so I don't think there's any consistency there. And, you know, normally you say, oh, it's going to be priced in. Well, let's look at the Orioles have done. This five-game win streak, they were a $1.35 dog, minus 105 pick them. 
with all three wins against the Rangers. And then there are even money to pick them last night, depending on where you look against the Angels. So it's not like the value is gone with Baltimore. They're still just a small favorite tonight. Second most profitable money line, first most profitable run line team in the league. There's a reason why the odds makers in the betting market have just not gotten the prices right on the Orioles this season. It's interesting you say that because I think a casual fan, Steve, would probably look and go, oh, my God, I, I'm not laying a price with the Orioles. The Orioles can't be favorites. Yet, as we stated, 13-7 and seven in their last 20 games. You know, I'm going to give credit to me and to Cam, actually. Uh, but, you know, we were watching the Orioles play the Blue Jays about a month ago, Steve. And, man, like, I was watching this team play, and they're turning double plays. They're making catches at the warning track. They got a good dugout and chemistry you could see. And I'm like, I was sort of watching them like, man, these guys are pretty good. And I, I thought to myself, and I said at the time, right after we came live on the air when they were playing, I said, you know, if Baltimore had starting pitching, these guys wouldn't be a fun team to play. It sounds right. crazy to say, Steve, they actually play the right way. Like, they're, they, they're, they have a bunch of young guys that just play hard, Steve. Right. Well, the, the, the catcher was the number one overall draft pick. They've called him up from Norfolk, my local minor league team here, about a month ago. I mean, they've got a youth movement, and they're playing hard. And the big thing is Baltimore's bullpen. That's why they're so good on the run line, Gabe. The plus one and a half has just been money yeah. because they keep getting the back close. Ends, they huh? were third. Now they're fifth in ERA. And we talk about, you know, playing on Baltimore. I mean, who wants to play the Angels? This team was 27-17 and 17 a month and a half ago, leading the division. And they lost 14 in a row, 18 out of 20 after starting 27 and 17. So that means, what are they now, 38 and 46? That means they're 11 and 29 the last 40 games. So, I mean, this is a cheap price when you look at current form. Steve, I just clicked the first time, and you're you're right. <laughs> the first thing that pops up, it was in red letters. It said, warning, there are, there are many system failures. There is no, it just said, uh, there is no guarantee. I don't know. It said it said it might work or it might scary, be man. one to three days. Yeah, I'm, I got one thousand dollars. I'm about to click here that might go through, or it said it might get lost. Said if not, hey, look, don't worry. In one to three days, it'll be resolved. Hey, look. In all seriousness, non sports related life advice: have a little cash on hand, and even the cash oh. probably won't be worth much in five years. But also, I mean, maybe a little bit of gold <laughs> bullion or a ring, a diamond, maybe. But also, have some water, some bottled water. Maybe some dry food for a week or so. I mean, yeah, I don't want to get all conspiracy. I don't, conspiracy and I don't either. But, this but stuff you're right, especially you, cash. You, you, start, you start thinking about it. Yeah. It's scary. I know. Well, exactly. Suddenly, I can't. You can't buy something. What do you mean? No, sorry. No, no. You know what I mean? Like you're right. You got to be prepared. The cash thing is big, Steve. I tweeted about it earlier. During the pandemic, nobody was taking cash. It was all you know what I mean. And it's people sort of changed our habits. You know, I went into a Chipotle the other day and. It was cash only. Same thing. Oh, sorry, the bank machine, the, the ATM doesn't, really, doesn't yeah, blah, blah, doesn't work. Everyone was walking out angry. No one had money. I had money yeah. on me by chance. And I thought to myself, I was like, bro, you got to start carrying money again around, man. Or you got to start carrying cash. I agree. Like how you threw it in there. It won't be worth much. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the only downside is it's losing its value every single day. But other than that, it might save your life. Keep a little. Says <laughs> Steve Merrill. Uh, but it's all right. So I'm taking the strikeout prop here, guys. Uh, we're, we're going with the strikeout prop. We're going to go uh, Castillo over five and a half strikeouts. And we're going to go McClanahan over seven and a half strikeouts. I do think the Rays win the game. I'm not a level laying 76 cents, but I do think the Rays win the game. And as me and Steve have been talking about, we're going to ride the hot hand here with the Baltimore Orioles. Uh, these guys have uh, won five games in a row for the first time uh, in two years. Looking for six. The Angels are a fade team right now. And like we said, Steve, reasonable price at minus 136. Yeah, you're getting a team that's hot as anybody in the league, the fifth best bullpen, and you're playing a team that's 11 and 29. What would you think the price would be on that normally? Like minus 200, minus 180 minimum, and it's minus 130. Open minus 110 at some locations last night. So they're just not pricing it right. That's why they're the second most profitable team in baseball. It's a good point. As we stated, you can argue there's actually uh, value as crazy as it sounds. On the Baltimore Orioles, more baseball picks on the other side. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network.
people are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rim. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare they bets. do what's fiscally responsible? See how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full circle. circle. All their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die for and them. And Diamond being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You could take the money line. And we had to go to San Jose too. Maybe a small play on San Jose. I'm gonna go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it. Anymore. Wow! In game live, prime time. He plays time. like he did in game five. They are gonna be all good in game six at home. But boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination? Get the winning edge only on Sports Grid, your 24/7 sports wagering network. The early line. Finally, we've seen the resolution come in after months of wondering as Baker goes to Carolina in exchange for just a conditional 2024 fifth round pick. It's the move that was supposed to happen, right, Kevin? This is what we were anticipating for months and the urgency that we read about just a few weeks ago finally came to fruition here early in July. You get him in ahead of camp. Only on Sports Grid. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The Pat McAfee Show. It was it was awesome. It was nuts. Uh, I mean, yeah, I I never imagined that it would be what it is. But uh, it, there were thousands of people chanting, and uh, I was I was pumped up. I, I really couldn't even feel the pain in my uh, the ruptured tendon. I, I was I was walking on it and putting weight on it, even though it yeah it, it was numb. And I uh, I was I was I was ready. To eat. I could have eaten nails, and I I, I was hungry. <laughs> the Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. You know, Judge, uh, last night is 30th. And, you know, this guy is just absolutely raking home runs and RBIs. And but Judge has had a great year. He's playing himself into a $300 million, maybe $400 million contract. We're going to have to see. And inevitably, the guy who's going to make the key decision on whether he stays or goes is going to be Aaron Judge. I think we could be headed toward another Freddie Freeman type situation. The Sports Grid Network. All right, so the frustration level is starting to grow a little bit. Um, I just tried to, maybe I saved myself some money, Steve. I just tried to load up $1,000. So maybe we'll see what happens. But now I have to go back. I'm like, all right, now I got to cash something out because I got to get this in here now. And I cannot believe this. This is what I get for laughing at people, Steve. I got to be honest. I was chuckling at everybody else's misery earlier. I was like, got nothing to do with me. Suddenly, my, then I tried to make a phone call. It's like, you're sorry, there's no mobile service. I'm like, what the hell? And uh, now I'm trying to load up money, but hey, it's all part of God's plan. So we're taking McClanahan over seven and a half strikeouts, Castillo over five and a half strikeouts in this game. I do think that Tampa wins this game, and let's get in on the Baltimore Orioles as well, guys. They've won five games in a row. Let's make it uh, six, although we got time to get in on the Baltimore game uh, still. All right, the Yankees and Red Sox, uh, Steve. I tell you what, for uh, for a rivalry, and obviously it is a rivalry, but. Uh, for the rivalry that it is, it's been sort of a one-sided rivalry as of late. The Yankees are now 9-2 and two in their last 11 games against Boston, Steve. Yeah, and look, they won last night 6-5. Uh, you know, it's interesting because we talked about this earlier in the week, Gabe, you and me when we did the radio, that, you know, the Yankees have not been hitting the ball. They haven't been hitting it, but they've been getting runs because obviously they hit home runs. But it looked like maybe they broke it out the previous couple games. They had that 16-run, 22-hit game against Pitt. But then last night, I think they only had, what was it, seven or eight hits on those six runs. They cooled off a little bit. Red Sox have been struggling a bit, although they've been a lot better against lefties this year. Left-handed starters, uh, pretty noticeable, actually, this year for Boston. Uh, 31 and 33 against right-handed starters, 
14 and five against left-handed starters, and they're facing a lefty tonight. And also, will be facing Montgomery most likely tomorrow on Saturday before tie on a righty on Sunday night baseball. So, the Red Sox are going to make any noise. It's probably tonight and tomorrow with some lefty starters for the Yankees. Seabold uh, and the Boston Red Sox are plus one thirty-four. The total is nine and a half uh, in this game. Miami Marlins and the New York Mets. So the Mets have been somewhat of a falling knife, not really falling knife, but, you know, playing 500 type of baseball. The injuries have caught up to them a little bit. Um, But they exploded with a big time win uh, last night, Steve. Uh, Miami had been playing good baseball. All these series are pretty big for these teams. You know, the all-star break rapidly approaching a trade deadline around the corner. You know, we're in July. These games are starting to count right now. What about tonight, uh, Steve, with uh, Bassett coming back? He's been uh, he's been gone for two weeks, so he comes back tonight. Bassett, minus 155, Marlins plus 140, total seven and a half. Yeah, you know, almost every team has played 40, uh, 40, I'm sorry, 82, 83, 84 games. The Marlins have played 81, so they're like the last team to reach halfway. Most teams did it a few nights ago, but we're right at the halfway into the second half now, even though the All-Star break isn't here. So it's fun to kind of look on underrated, overrated teams. I thought the Marlins might be a little underrated, because their run run differential is like plus 10 a couple of days ago, which means they should have been about two games above 500. They're currently three games below. Uh, the Mets, meanwhile, are kind of like the Yankees. We kept waiting for them to regress a bit. As you said, Gabe, the uh, regression has begun the past few weeks, but it looks like they're heating back up after going 5-5. Five and five, uh, They're now 4-1 and one straight up their last five. Marlins had won six in a row, back-to-back losses by 15-2 to two the last two games. Looks like they're cooling off. So I would say the momentum is probably with the Mets in this game. And so speaking of hot teams, how about the Atlanta Braves? Hot as Georgia asphalt. And a happy birthday to our boy Kyle uh, in Atlanta. I see he's out on the town in the ATL right now. Uh, so if you're out there uh, maybe tuning in, uh, Kyle, I see you online. So happy birthday. I'm like uh, I'm like romper room here. I'm wishing people a happy birthday all the time on Twitter. I got a lot of fans. Everyone's birthday seems to be. A lot of our listeners' birthdays seem to be in the last... A couple of days, but man, this 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 Atlanta team. So talking about the Mets, it you know, and Steve, I talked about it earlier. People were talking about the Braves, and I said, you know, these guys usually take a little while to start to dial it up a notch. They got Max back in the bullpen right now. Um, they're a great managed team. They always seem to have injuries, but it, you know, they still just go about their business and and win baseball games. That very impressive run against the Cardinals uh, this week, and I got to tell you, Steve Washington, these guys are terrible. You're yeah. talking about a falling knife. These guys are a falling sword. Right, and they're a team that won the World Series two years ago. These are the past two World Series, or two of the last three World Series champs. Yeah, uh, with you the know, Dodgers in, in there. So, Let's not forget, Steve. Right, exactly. The Dodgers <laughs> in the middle, and the Braves had a 3-1 lead on your L.A. Dodgers game, as you remember, in that NLCS. So we very well could have the past three champs here. But um, Atlanta was below 500 at this point last season. So they're obviously well above where they need to be to make another run this year at 49 and 35 currently. Um, they were 26 and 7 run going into last night. They lose, as you said, 3 2 extra innings. So they're now 27 and 7, I believe, their last 34. So they're red hot. Nationals, the fourth most money burning team in the league. They're minus 14 units on the season. Uh, they stand 30 and 55 overall. Very hard for me to make a case. I would say maybe it's a little bit of a letdown spot for Atlanta after that tough loss last night, but they don't have to travel. They stay home. Um, so it'd be Atlanta or a pass for me in this one. Man, the um, the the Washington Nationals in the division, Steve, what's their record now? I think they've won six games all year. Uh, they're up to seven. They're seven and 30 in the division, the Nationals. Right. Wow, nine and like... eight against the Central, so they got that going for them. <laughs> <I know. laughs> nine and eleven against the NL West, and five and six against the American League. So, yeah, the seven and thirty is just atrocious. But you know what's interesting, Gabe? The other four teams, including the Marlins, who I just mentioned, they all have positive run differentials. The NL East and the AL East are just loaded, and we thought the Beltway boys, my Nationals, my Orioles, are going to be the you know the bottom feeders. But the Orioles are dangerous, as we've talked about. So, yeah, the Nationals are really, really hurting this season, and. My point about them winning the World Series three years ago, the reason I bring that up, because as you know, these are the type of teams that can tank all year and they don't ever come back to the mean. You know, they just continue to tank. Soto is all they've got now. Uh, They've got Bell. You know, they've got Nelson Cruz, like in the 3-4 spot. They'll probably unload both of them before the trade deadline. Um, I see very little upside for the Nationals. I need to see them do something on the field for more than a couple games before I'm going to back them. What do you think about the run line 
with, with the Braves here. I tell you, Eddie Fetty, uh, Eric Fetty hasn't been bad. Um, he's actually pitched pretty well as of late. Are we walking into a trap with the run line, or you know, what do you, are you confident you think they roll them, or you know, for the sort of the more public parlay player, I always just like to get the Dodgers out of the way, Steve. So what I'll often do is I'll just sort of, you know, what I mean, a gamble like yeah, I'm not laying two fifty, but I'll just sort of put it in. It's like right, I'll put the Dodgers at the back end of this thing. Like a good example is here. Look, you take the Atlanta Braves to win and the Dodgers to win. It's plus one hundred six, Steve. It's not bad. Yeah, but you know, Gabe, we talk about it all the time. The Dodgers either win by two or more, or they lose outright. So you kind of wasted it by putting the money line in there. Um, Except fact, the other night, uh, of course, Braves... and it actually cost me, Steve. But it was yeah, only exactly. the fifth time. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was just going to say, I knew you were going to say that it happened, but it's, what, fifth or sixth time? I, I know, I know, I know. Happened. Um, I'm actually glad to see No, 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 but I should clarify, you Steve, because you know, you know I'm all about smart money management. I put the parlay in, and then I also play the run line, Steve. That's my method. That's what I do. I play them both. Well, the other thing you could do, too, in all seriousness, is you can make a minus one line if you want. If your book doesn't offer, you know, I think FanDuel probably does. But if, you know, you can't find it, yeah, you do half yeah. a money line, half a one and a half, and you get the push. By the way, the uh, Braves, I'm looking back over their last, like, 13 games or so. I don't think they've had a single one-run win. you got to go back, like, 14 games. They've either lost outright one by two or more, and that's not a surprise. Once again, good offensive team, good team in general. The Yankees are the same way. Uh, you've been making a lot of money this year laying the one and a half at a reasonable price on these good quality class A teams. Yeah, I remember off the top of my head, Steve, when they went on the 14 game win streak, they were 12 and two on the run line. There you they, go. They was, yeah, it, yeah, it was a 12 and two run. And you know, it's funny, Steve, because conversely, like, oh, we talk about the good teams, like bad teams. I was looking at what Kansas City, um, well, Kansas City was weird this week with, with, with Houston. They're always getting the lead all the time, but you know, Kansas City were, were on one of those, I don't know, they were two, you know, two and 11 in a 13 game run, Steve. And I was looking, I was like, wow, not only did they not lose by two, like they were losing by four, they were losing by three, they were losing, you know, and then you get into sort of the, you know, the alternate lines the against also. some of the worst teams. Yeah. yeah. The A's you know, and I mean, Reds sort of look like at the better team. Well, the Nationals, the bad teams get blown out. That's another reason it works. And by the way, Gabe, I'm looking now, Atlanta's current 27 wins since that win streak began. 23 of the 27 have been by at least two runs wow. or more. Wow. So it says, it says it right there. It, yeah. it, it says, so for the record on the run line, and it's a little different. Like Baltimore are 53 and 31 on the run line. Texas are 47 and 33, but they're always underdogs for the most part on the run line. Right. The Dodgers are actually 48 and 34. So, you know, if you look, let's look at Atlanta as a, as a favorite uh, on the but run you gotta line. Look but at games, thing, but it, what's most important, though, Gabe, is the games that they're winning because when the Dodgers lose outright, you're saving a lot of money by being on the run line still, yes. you know, because you're laying like yes. minus 110 instead of minus 220. So that's why it's so important is when you – it's not when you win. You're winning a unit either way. It's when you lose is when it saves you a substantial amount. It's almost like two to one. Well, you know what's amazing, Steve? Exactly. You look at, So look at the Yankees. The Yankees are 60 and 23 on the season, an incredible record. 60 and 23. They're up $1,373 for the $100 better uh, on, on the money line. The Los Angeles Dodgers are 53 and 29. They are 24 games over 500. If you bet $100 on every Dodgers game this year, you've won $41. You're going to buy a dinner for the family over at Pollo Loco. Um, you've, you won four. That's amazing, Steve. Eh? $41. You figure oh, I'm going to bet on the best team all the time. How can I not win? I mean, you're 53 and 29. You've won 40 bucks, Steve. It's ridiculous. Yeah, my guess would be because the Yankees are playing a tougher division, maybe, so they've had more competitive games in the AL East, and the uh, the Dodgers yeah. maybe have played a week. Yeah, against the Blue overall. Jays, the Rays, the Red Sox, right. or they could be minus and they were underrated all, coming in minus one thirty. Yeah. You know, the yeah. Dodgers are a known quantity. Good point. The Yankees were supposed to be good, but they probably weren't priced quite as high. And think of the Braves' record, Steve: forty-four and forty on the run line, yet they weren't even good for the first two months of the season. Right. I like to see, like, you know, like you just talked, what you just talked about. So what, was it 27 games? What was it, four of them? So yeah, the so 23 and four. The last 27 wins have been by two or more. The Dodgers, I think, have only had like five this year in which they didn't win by two or more out of what? Yeah, 40, five. 40 wins, basically. Uh, yeah, 50. Dodgers, wins. we don't even need to look up, Steve. We're just keeping track, you and I. Uh, all right, we yeah, got. It's, uh, it's been incredible. We've got breaking news. Uh, breaking news. NFL, CFL crossover here. Yeah, let's get this uh, up here. Jimmy Garoppolo. Everyone's wondering where Jimmy Garoppolo is going to go? The Saskatchewan Rough Riders, baby. And uh, before wow. everybody, no, no, I got it. Yeah, no, it's fake. 
Uh, but Twitter's going up. Twitter's going off, and actually, like, I don't know, like people are buying it. Like, it's popping up all over the place. He looks pretty good in the uniform, though. Yeah, I like the green. That's the first thing I noticed as well. It's like he's on the Jets. <laughs> J-E-T-S. Yeah, the Jets. Jets. The Jets stole their jersey, Steve. You notice? Like, they stole the green. Remember the Jets changed their green from a couple of years? They stole these guys' Kelly jerseys, green. bro. I yeah. like, I've always the liked Tennessee... Kelly Green. Is that what that is? I think it looked Kelly Green to me, yeah. I, I, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of the green with the, the tribe, obviously, so I've always been particular to green. Now here's the uh, the NBA Summer League rings. It's not no, bad. I, NBA I, I Summer League champions. Rings. Yeah. NBA Summer League champions. That's cool. That, that you know the cool thing about that game. That's what I was saying earlier. That you know they're taking it somewhat serious, especially once they get to the playoff round. So that's not a bad thing. You know, some of them do. I don't know. Like last night, it was funny. The Pistons, like I said, they, they were playing like a street ball game. Uh, the Pistons were playing like a street ball game. Yeah, but I said it earlier, Steve. Yeah, they, they're giving championship rinks uh, now. Um, this is the first time they've ever done it. Yeah, like right. I said, the 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 pro the the. The profile of the NBA Summer League, man, has is, is never been higher. Like, they really are pushing this. The television network's pushing it. They're giving rings. You got your Final Fours and all this. I'm looking forward to the TBT. All right, we'll have some 7 o'clock best bets on the other side. And uh, Steve will ride off into the sunset. Share Pan is back from Pittsburgh. We got Dubsy. We got Mick. We got more baseball picks. We'll get into the CFL uh, game. Crazy line moves in this CFL game. The number is plummeting. Um, as far as uh, we can tell, Cody Fajardo will be the starting quarterback. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. Maurice Allen, 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? McAfee show. What did you think of the young wide receiver? What did you think of Watson? What did you think of Sammy? What do you think about uh, going into the season? Any thoughts on what you're going to have to focus on or anything like that? Definitely look the part. All three of them. All three of the guys we drafted all uh, you know, have, have physical gifts. Obviously the top two picks are all uh, bigger. Um, Dobbs and Watson. But, uh, but the seventh round pick got a lot of stuff to him. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. Some more games to bet on out there. And actually a futures market, DRS, would you believe it? For the Vegas Summer League champion, OKC and the Detroit Pistons are co-favorites at plus 750. Portland 12 to 1 alongside the Nets at the same number. With the top five being rounded out, a couple of teams really all in that scenario at a 14 to 1. Orlando, Memphis, Indiana, and the Philadelphia 76ers. Only on SportsGrid. Fantasy Sports Today. Another sort of, you know, piece of this whole puzzle was the fact that we thought that Jimmy Garoppolo could end up leaving San Francisco and maybe going to Carolina too. I suppose yeah. Cleveland I mean, is potentially an option there over Brissett, but I feel like Cleveland feel I, it's you know kind of shakily uh, committed to Brissett at this point if Watson doesn't play. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. Minus 104 for the Orioles, minus 112 for Silseth and the Angels. This total at eight and a half. I think some runs tonight, Scotty. Yeah, I mean, both of these guys are uh, basically terrible, these pitchers. So I'm, I'm guessing lots of runs, 
And I'm gonna go with the Angels on the streets tonight against the O's. And I, I hit the O's last night. I've been hitting the O's. I've been hitting the Tigers. The Sports Grid Network. Game time decisions continues. I am Ratsy. Uh, we got Steve Merrill uh, with us for a couple of more moments. Uh, Dave Sharapan's going to step up in it. We got Dubsy. Uh, Dubsy's, uh, you know, Dubsy's Australian, so uh, Dubsy's into uh, tennis as well. We got Wimbledon this weekend, uh, Steve. Uh, Jovac, uh, Novak, uh, Novak versus uh, Kyrgios. The hothead Kyrgios should be an explosive uh, tournament. You know, Steve, I broke down. Uh, I, I don't. I didn't have cable in two rooms. All right. I didn't like. You know what I mean. But because of F one, it's always on at like six in the morning and seven in the morning. Right? <laughs> so, watch the TV right next to me. Uh, it'll be handy for Wimbledon as well. Uh, the early, early morning view. You got TVs in all the rooms, Steve. Oh yeah, I'm I'm decked out. And um, yeah, I remember as a kid watching before we had cable. We'd always like do something on the July Fourth weekend, and we'd always have like three channels, you know, and the rabbit ears. And I, I watched a lot of Wimbledon as a kid early in the morning. So I'm with you on that, Gabe. Uh, don't follow the tennis too much nowadays, though. Uh, all right, Steve, what do you got for us on the way out here? Words of wisdom. You got a baseball pick you want to share with us? Yeah, you know, something I posted for free for everybody at wagertalk.com. Actually, goes in an hour. Um, I'm going to look at the Brewers tonight, minus one and a half. Another one of those quality teams. Let's get the price down from under over minus $2 down to a minus 105 price. Brewers, minus one and a half, minus 105 against the Pirates, who put up a little fight the last couple of weeks, but they're starting to fade, and they've been terrible on the road this year. Uh, Brewers, Class A playoff caliber team, minus the one and a half, like we've been talking about. We were talking about the the Atlanta Braves, guys. And, you know, just you, you, you ask yourself, are they really going to keep winning? Are they going to win? Yeah, I think they are. We talked about it, guys. The Nationals have played 37 games against division opponents. They've won seven of them. You got Morton on the hill here tonight. Steve just uh, brought up the uh, the fact that um, their last 27 wins, they're 24 and three um, on the run yeah, line. 23 and four. I think 23, 23 and four. 27. Yeah, still yeah, pretty 23 good. out of 27. Yeah. 23 and four. Yeah. 20, 23 and four. Uh, no, 23 out of the 27, exactly. So I'm going to lay the run and a half. We got him in the parlay with the other uh, Dodgers, but we'll lay the run and a half minus 125 with the Atlanta Braves. Follow Steve on Twitter. And, uh, of course, find him over a wager talk. Always a pleasure, Steve. Thanks, Gabe. I'm Jay Berman with this Sports Grid update. Baseball is where we'll begin. We're in the bottom of the first inning in Cincinnati. Very interesting pitching matchup. McClanahan for the visiting Tampa Bay Rays. Castillo for the hometown Reds. We're scoreless. Bottom one. 